Hi, today we'll be going over action potential and how it's generated within your axon. So action potential is the voltage that a neuron sends through its axon to carry electrical information down to the axon terminal so it can release neurotransmitters or anything else. In this case, we'll be going over the different stages of action potential. And one thing to keep in mind is that with action potential, it's usually generated at the axon hillock, which is a segment of the cell body transitioning into the axon, or it can be generated on certain segments of the axon, known as the nodes of Ranvier, which are just bordered between those myelin sheathed glial cells. Okay, so today um, we have a membrane potential versus time chart. So you have membrane potential on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And this graph just kind of shows you what our membrane potential is within our neuron. Now some basic uh, overlines that we'll need to establish beforehand is that this small dashed green line right here at negative 70 millivolts, this is going to represent our resting membrane potential. So some professors and textbooks differ if it's negative 70, sometimes we'll say negative 65, but generally it's going to be a negative number. And this second dash line on top at negative 55, this is going to represent our threshold value. Okay, and threshold value is the value that our cell neuron needs to attain to generate an action potential. So it's negative 55 in this example, but once again it could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending on the textbook or neuron. Okay, so now we'll be going over the different stages of how you generate an action potential. And we'll be reviewing over those different membrane channels and pores that we talked about in the last video. So stage one, you have your membrane potential at resting, negative 70. And this is known as resting membrane potential. Okay. So at stage one, you have your sodium potassium pump working really hard to keep a lot of sodium ions outside of the cell and a lot of potassium ions inside the cell. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then after uh, your cell receives a signal or some kind of stimulus event, it starts to increase in its membrane potential or become less negative. Now in this stage right here, as your membrane potential is increasing, it is in a sense becoming depolarized or less negative. So stage two is known as depolarization. And during depolarization, you have your sodium channels on your plasma membrane open up. So you have to remember that because of the sodium potassium pump, we have a lot of sodium ions outside of the cell. And sodium is a positive ion, so if a channel opens up for it, it's going to rush all the way inside the cell and make it less negative. So you can write here, sodium channels open. So your membrane potential in the neuron, it increases steadily, and then it hits threshold value. So threshold, like we mentioned before, is the minimum membrane potential value your neuron needs to achieve to have an action potential. Once it hits threshold, an action potential will occur uh, no matter how much stimulus you have. So in this case, when it comes to neurons and action potentials, they are known as all or none events. So even if you get enough stimulus that maybe you only reach negative 56, if you don't hit threshold, you won't have an action potential. And no matter, like, maybe you had enough stimulus to go a little bit above threshold, you still generate the same action potential 
even if it only uh, compared to an action potential that only hit negative 55. So your action potential will be the same no matter what in the nervous system. Okay, so um, you hit stage two depolarization, action potential occurs, and it eventually peaks at a certain value. Now when it peaks, your sodium channels are going to close and your potassium channels will open around then. And then your member potential will slowly be brought back down, hoping to achieve this resting potential. So as your member potential starts to decrease or become more negative, this is known as repolarization. And you can associate repolarization with your potassium channels opening So when potassium channels open, because of the sodium potassium pump, we have a lot of potassium positive ions inside our cell. So with an open channel, they're going to be uh, transferred out of the cell, making the inside of the cell more negative. And your sodium channels tend to close uh, somewhere around during depolarization event, but they're closed by the time potassium channels opened up. So you're not uh, transferring uh, sodium ions into the cell as you're transferring potassium ions out through these ion channels. Only the sodium potassium pump does both ionic movements at the same time. Okay, so your potassium ions are rushing out of the cell and your member potential is decreasing. However, at stage four, those potassium channels tend to be a little bit slow at closing, so they let out a little bit more potassium ions than they should. So you tend to overshoot that membrane resting potential and you make the neuron a little bit more negative than it should be. So at stage four, we call this hyperpolarization. So at stage four, um, your potassium channels have closed, but you need your sodium potassium pump to reachieve that ideal resting membrane potential and negative 70. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the basic stages of action potential within the cell neuron. First you have resting membrane potential, and then eventually you have the neuron stimulated in some ways that its membrane potential starts to increase. Eventually it hits threshold and the neuron becomes depolarized to generate this action potential. Once an action potential hits its peak, because it's an all or none event, the peak is going to be the same within that neuron uh, for that action potential, you're going to repolarize the neuron. However, in most cases, because your potassium panels are a little slower to close, you're going to overshoot that ideal resting member potential and hyperpolarize. But because of your sodium potassium pump, you'll eventually achieve that ideal resting member potential, and then your neuron is ready to generate another action potential. 